Despite all the emphasis today on outpatient care, on clinics, or preventative medicine, you still need hospitals. But what is their role in the changing landscape of healthcare today? We're at the INSEAD Alumni Healthcare Summit in London, and we're about to speak with Jacob West. He is the Director of Strategy at King's College Hospital. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you. Um, King's College Hospital was started way back in about 1840 or so, and it was in an impoverished area of London and it provided a wide range of services. Well, today its mission has clearly changed. Um, can you give us a little bit idea of, of what it is that you're actually doing at King's College? In some ways we're two hospitals, I suppose. So King's is uh, in, set in Lambeth and Southwark, which is quite a deprived area of London, in inner city London. And to some extent we are first and foremost a, a local hospital, so we have one of the busiest uh, accident and emergency departments in the country. We have 120,000 people coming through that every year and we provide uh, maternity services and other local services. But we're also a specialist hospital. So we provide um, li liver, neurosciences, haematology, cardiac surgery and so on to a, a much wider population, both to our local population but also to people nationally and internationally. Uh, and we find really that, that those two roles reinforce each other. Now the NHS has just gone under another reorganization or it is currently going under a reorganization. How is this affecting you? I think to some extent people have got system fatigue. There's been a lot of change in the NHS in recent years and uh, people find it hard, frankly, to, to follow what, what all these changes might mean. To some extent though, I think the reforms, the changes themselves uh, on the ground feel like a bit of a sideshow compared to the financial pressures on healthcare systems globally and the NHS is no different. So although funding in the NHS will be reasonably steady for the next few years, that, that is against a backdrop of year-on-year -year significant increase in funding. So the, the financial challenge, to some extent, I think is, is a bigger challenge than the reorganization challenge for us. The idea of teledoctors, or doctors by long distance, seems to serve a purpose. Are you using that, and what's your feeling about its effectiveness? I think it's a big opportunity uh, and one that the NHS in, in the UK has, I would say, not taken advantage of uh, particularly so far. So if you look at some markets like in the US, organizations like Group Health are, I, I would say, upwards of 40% of their patient consultations, is my understanding, are, are not necessarily face-to-face. -face. In the UK, it's, it's low single digits, uh, I would say, the corresponding stat statistic. Um, so there's a huge opportunity. I, I, I suppose there's two challenges or caveats. The first is the geographic distances you're talking about in the UK are, are a lot smaller than in the US. So to some extent the rationale arguably is not quite as strong for people uh, who might otherwise be hindered by having to travel large distances. And the second issue which I think is shared with that in the US is that financial incentives don't necessarily support investment in that kind of business model. So arguably at the moment it makes sense for hospitals to continue to see patients face to face because they aren't paid sufficiently to do the kind of telemedicine that you were talking about. If we could change that dynamic, I think we could really exploit the opportunity. If you could create the ideal healthcare system, anything you wanted, what would it be? Well, I think we ought to look at creating what I would call more integrated, excuse me, integrated care organizations. Uh, or some people call them closed loop systems. So systems where you have hospitals working alongside primary care, community care, mental health services, and where payors buy those kind of services uh, on the basis of what it costs to provide care for a population rather than paying separately for each, um, each piece of activity. In other words, that's, that's moving from volume-based healthcare to value-based healthcare. And the biggest challenge facing healthcare at the moment? I mean, if you wanted to go from this to your dream, what would be the biggest obstacle in your way? It's not a innovative thought per se, but the balancing um, the public the pressures on public funding on the one hand, the increase in demand driven by um, aging population, demographics, and epidemiology, and thirdly, rising costs which seem for some reason in healthcare to go above normal inflation. That wicked triangular, if you like, is, is I think the hardest thing for any healthcare system to cope with. So what, what would you consider the biggest challenge facing healthcare at the moment? I suppose the, the, the long run healthcare trend that is driving how systems and organizations are adapting is, is moving away from a 
perhaps you know, the 19th century environment or 20th century environment where infectious disease was the biggest challenge to a world where the management of long-term conditions, chronic conditions, is, is, is the new challenge. And that's been creeping on, up on us for some time and it's accentuated by an aging population. But it requires a very different uh, business model, very different treatments, investment arguably as much in prevention as in cure than did the paradigm of infectious disease. And arguably healthcare systems and organisations haven't really caught up with that long run trend quite yet. It's, they seem to be things like diabetes or hypertension, or, which are kind of self-induced when you think about it. So maybe the emphasis should be on wellness rather than medicine? Well. It, those are exactly the, the kinds of chronic conditions that are, are part of that challenge. And yes, um, part of changing the, the, the model must, I think, be thinking about what the, what's the role of the patient and moving away perhaps from the model where we have a paternalistic doctor and a supine patient to thinking of the, the patient as a partner, uh, thinking of groups of patients as having a responsibility as well as individual patients. And yes, indeed, a focus on wellness rather than just on, on uh, treating the symptoms. Well, thank you very much, Jacob West, for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you.